What's up, everybody? You're watching The Zoo, and we have some amazing guests for you today. We are interviewing international icon Clarice and singer-songwriter Mari Monti. So don't go anywhere, because the show is about to start. Welcome back to The Zoo, everybody. We have a great show today. Let's introduce our panel. Say hi, ladies. I'm Jovita. Hey, Kay. All right, guys. So today we're going to be covering a really uh, interesting topic that's been all over the news. Defunding the police is today's big deal. All right, guys. So <laughs> where do we stand on defunding the police? Uh, I think that the first thing to like make sure that you th know that's clear is that defunding and abolishing is completely different. Right. Um, a lot of people are like, we can't get rid of the police. Like, there's going to be like the purge out there, and it's like, well, that's not what people who are wanting to defund the police are actually asking for. They're really just asking that we reallocate like some of these literal millions of dollars that the police are getting every single year and put it into different type of programs and uh, like education, housing, um, like mental health, and these are sectors that, I mean, I don't think anyone should really argue that they should be getting money. And yet, you know. But do you think like the term like defund the police has turned into like an umbrella term where it's just like, because yes. you have the extremist and there's, it's like a movement at this point, but it's just being used as like an umbrella for like defund, maybe reform, maybe abolish, yeah. you know? And the media runs with it. So I'm like, if I get mugged, who am I calling now? Yeah. But yeah. that's not necessarily the truth. What I thought was really interesting is the arrest of Ghislaine Maxwell. There was like, Eight officers. Mm -hmm. Like, did we really need eight officers to arrest her? What was yeah. she going to do? Yeah. Hit him with a croissant or something? Yeah. You know what I mean? It just so it's really interesting. Where do you stand on it? Um, I think that it's something that we should definitely be supportive of, um, mainly because you know if, if we want to play even devil's advocate and say like we love the police and you know, they are probably really tired because nine out of 10 service calls that police are responding to are nonviolent. Like, so they're going for mental health stuff. They're going for petty crime. And there could be other people that can go with degrees and can go and try and talk down someone who's having an erratic mental breakdown instead of an officer because, you know, they're not trained to deal with that. And we can give them their time to go, you know, solve crimes, like all the various murders and rapes that are unsolved. And we can have people who actually know how to deal with mental health issues or deal with domestic violence and they can go in and defuse the situation because a lot of these calls end up in them being killed because they don't know how to react to someone who's you know having this crazy breakdown so I think it's good yeah I think this moment of like instability is kind of like a, a restart button where we're like whoa, whoa whoa like how far has the police gone and are they operating the way that they should because like for instance nurses right they have to de-escalate people mm -hmm. that are drunk all the time but they don't like bare arms yeah. <laughs> you know right. or I've even seen it um, on Twitter because you know I'm big on Twitter <laughs> Um, where they're like, why is it that a lawyer has spent eight years to learn mm -hmm. the law and defend the law, but, you know, like, in some instances, in some states, because it's also different, it's, like, six months, you know, mm -hmm. and they're, like, enforcing the law, but using, like, over, over power. Um, so, like, it's obviously not right, so it's, you know, the movement has to start. Yeah. And I agree with you about it being an umbrella term, mm -hmm. because, like, I saw the cops got canceled. Like, that's not what we meant by defund the mm -hmm. police after 33 seasons. Like, we seriously need to, like, reallocate the resources that we have, because, you know, it, there's so much money that's going mm -hmm. into it, and, I mean, there's just too many lives that have been lost at this point. Yeah. And it's just, I saw a meme, or also, you learn so much stuff through memes. Dude, I love our culture, because yeah. it's, like, slightly right. funny, but slightly serious, but it's, like, also pro-movement. It's funny, but, but also sad, like, the memes. Yeah, it's right. perfect. Um, and it was a, a set of tweets from this public defender, and um, it was something I never even thought about, and she mentioned how whenever she saw a case that was so clearly bogus, like, there was no evidence of them be having drugs or anything, oh, she would yeah. always check to see what time that this, um, you know, case went in. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was always, like, 30 minutes to an hour before before that they were about to have to um, end their shift. And the reason why they were doing that is because then they get to now sit in the DA office and it takes a really long time to get these cases um, filed and everything typed up. And now the officers are collecting, um, officers are getting overtime and that's taxpayers' dollars who are literally paying for them to sit in there and sometimes do it um, falsely. They're just getting them in there so they can sit there and like collect overtime. And that's part of the things that we just need mm -hmm. to fix to stop that from happening. Yeah, it was a thread on Twitter. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's one that says um, that, like, defund the police sounds radical until you realize, like, they defund education every year. Mm -hmm. So right. you're like, wait, you know, so, like, what is the real news out there and what is actually happening in government? Because, yeah. again, I think, like, it's a whole movement to fund the police and people are just throwing the word out there, but they don't know what it means, yeah. you know, to actually put that into play. I think there's so many cops who just, like, abuse their power. And, and I'm telling you that from personal experience. Mm -hmm. I've screwed more cops than an iPhone camera. 
Really? So, <laughs> you know, and I think that it, it's real. It, the tide is starting to turn, and I think it's a really, it's a great, exciting time to be alive. Yeah, I think so too. It, it feels like we're a part of something that's really important, and we're gonna be like that thing that people read about in their history books, and they're like, whoa, that's really cool. Like that, you know, brought us change. I mean, hopefully that's what happens, and the world just doesn't end before Yeah, that. do you think there is gonna be change though, or do you think it's just something, and then the hashtag is gonna like, you know, not survive in like a month or two? Do you think there's real energy to create change? I feel like for the first time in my lifetime, it seems like that's so. Mm. Because, you know, I think that there's so many social warriors on social media. And unlike the press, which I think is very strategic and calculated and doesn't tell you the whole story, it's very hard to control the narrative of what's happening on social media. And you're seeing these videos that are coming. I mean, I see these videos on social media of, of these people, the filth and horror. Mm. And, you know, those are just people from my family. So it, it's really it's really shocking. Block. <laughs> it's blocked, right. I feel like with social media, you're able to see so many things that were hidden before, yeah. which I think uh, excites people to stand up for something. Do you guys get exhausted by the amount of information that we see? Yeah. Yes. Because it's like the, these injustices aren't new. They're just starting to be recorded mm -hmm. now, you know? And so you, you put it into those terms and you're like, oh my God, but it's like you're seeing it left and yeah. right. Does it get overwhelming? For I you get guys? exhausted, but it also like fires me up. Like the first thing I do in the morning is like, I'll check like those Karen going wild Instagrams. <laughs> just to, like, <laughs> who's the new Karen yeah, today? Yeah, so see like who's getting, because. It's, it's, it is sad, but at the same time, it's exciting because we have this technology to really like yeah. put these people on blast and kind of, you know, with our current presidency, it kind of let people come out of hiding. And I think with the power, you know, we might not be able to change them, but at least we can like put them back into hiding <laughs> so that they can right. not feel so confident yeah, just like being sure. terrible people. <laughs> Who would have sure. thought that the iPhone camera would be like the best weapon? I know. Of 2020 Dude, really? to expose so many. It's not just for selfies anymore. Because when people get stopped over, they'll start recording, and then the cops get all mad that they're recording. Yeah. And they're trying. To, I think they're trying to make that illegal, right, for them to record right. like those. In <laughs> You're just like, what? <laughs> like these people have no fear of being on camera, which is me. I don't even want to be on camera without my hair combed, let alone <laughs> screaming profanities in Walgreens. You know, it's really it's disgusting. But I think that this is an exciting time, and we could be the future, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. You know what I think. Um, I think that there's multiple ways of being informed now as well. So social media has brought different platforms, different hashtags. So I think we all just need to be informed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read up, ladies and gentlemen. Sign those petitions. Too. Sign those petitions. Guys, when we come back, we are going to be joined by international icon Clarice. Do not go anywhere. Back to the zoo, existencia es poder. We want to remind everyone that existence is power y que es muy importante que todos nos hagamos contar en el censo del 2020. If we do not get counted, we will not know how many people live in each community and what public services are needed, como clínicas de salud, servicios de emergencia, asistencia de vivienda y más. It is time to unite and make our voices heard. Llena el formulario del census por internet, por teléfono, o envíalo por correo. Do it today. On today's big deal, we're going to talk about the 2020 census and why it's so important to participate. Totally. You know, this is a huge and big deal to me because I really do believe that our community oftentimes does not get counted as much as they should. Not only, you know, should we, I mean, this is a whole other thing, but we should be counting everybody. Um, but especially people that should be counted, you know, so right. I think it's a, a responsibility for yourself to be counted for your community. It helps your community if you fill out the census and lets the government know where the resources should be allocated. Sometimes certain communities are under-resourced because they don't take part in things like the census. So I think this is... This is the cool thing where it's like when you talk about the different ways you can help, the different ways you can contribute, the different ways you can make things better for yourself, for your community, for your family, um, number one, people say go out and vote. This is something that everyone can do. So it's something where you, you know, we say existencia es poder because your existence is your power. You're, you're, you just showing up, you just filling out the, the census, which by the way, you can do either, I did it on, on the internet. Super I found easy. the code, I plugged it in, I, uh, I submitted it, but you can also, you know, in the past my parents would, would either call or you could just mail it in. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not complete, they'll send, a, they send the, the, the person to your house to, to, clear, to clear stuff up or answer. It questions. has to get done. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things is that we definitely notice when we don't receive. 
because there was a lack you know, of vote or of information. So you might think, oh, by filling out the information, it doesn't matter. Who, how are they gonna know I didn't fill it out? Um, but we definitely start noticing when we don't receive you know, benefits, government money, and then we start wondering, well, why don't we have anything? Why don't our communities have funding? And it's, you know, well, we, we didn't raise our voices when we had the opportunity to. So don't let it get to that where we feel the lack of, rather the benefits of um, filling out the census. Yeah, and they, and I mean, it's across the board because from the way federal grants are funded to the way, um, like you're represented in Congress, that's based on population, which this is how it's counted. There's no, there's no scan, there's no, it's just every 10 years we get to see um, who lives where, how many people live where, and that dictates everything. Mm -hmm. So the more accurate it is, the better we'll be represented and the more accurately we'll be represented. I think, um, I think that's important. I, I'm trying to, do you remember Umberto 10 years ago? The yeah, I was actually excited, like, the, I, I, you know, especially, God, that was, those were the good old days ago. when Obama <laughs> was president, and I was more socially active and representing, and actually, I was really big when it came to representation, because just think about it, we get more representation, that means we get more representation in the, in the Congress, we get more representation in the House of Representatives, because you get more representatives when a state has their true numbers, and I think California has actually been underscored, and a lot of Latin communities across the country have been underscored, so what does the United States look like if we have more Latinos in Congress, just ask yourself that. Yeah. Would we have more resources to allocate it to our community? Will we have more access? Representation is huge. I get excited about filling the census. Look, there's, there's only two things that I like filling out in the mail. One, my mail-in <laughs> voting, because I love to vote. I love sitting down there, I get my coffee, I do my research, I find out about these judges, the sheriffs, you know what I'm saying? Like, all oh, I love voting it all the way down. And then also the census, because I know that when I fill out the census, I am counted. I, I, I feel I check that box. What, is it, do they put Hispanic or Latinx? I don't know what the census is using this, but you know what? I'm checking that box, I'm letting them know that we're here, that we're part of this country, and that we need to be counted. And if you get counted, you're gonna make life better, not just for yourself, but your community. And I think it was really important too because they actually started teaching little kids about the census at a very young age. So one, you know, if you get little kids into the habit, they're gonna more likely fill it out as they grow older. But a lot of kids sometimes have to fill out the census for their parents because yeah. of the language barrier. But they do have over 50 plus languages uh, available to you online. And Espanol is one of them. And Espanol is one of them, exactly. Uh, and actually, um, Andres, you were talking about how they have like an uh, FAQ page that they can... Yeah, find. I mean, so for example, if, uh, you know, obviously the, the, there's a lot of information that goes around. There's, mm -hmm. there's social media. Sometimes you hear rumors. Sometimes people talk about stuff. The best way to kind of like be proactive and address those rumors for yourself or for your friends and family, they have a... Uh, they have a rumors about the census section on the website that you can check out that's really helpful and it's probably the best, uh, kind of the best tool to help understand. Um, and I just think there's nothing more important than, than telling your, your parents, your loved ones, um, that, that it's, it's beyond important to, to fill out the census. This is 10 years of um, firefighters, of housing uh, programs, of there's just, there's even, I didn't read through the whole list, but they have the whole list of, of everything that kind of uh, gets funded or is decided or allocated through the census pro process. And it's, it's super detailed and it's super important. Um, and all it is is like, I mean, it took me, I would say under 20 minutes to, to fill the whole thing out. And, and uh, you know, I think if you, if the questions are kind of confusing, then I would say, call right mm -hmm. you know but it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward and you know i think that there's sometimes a lot of stigma with people in our community about filling out government papers right. and giving your information and whether that's going to make yourself or someone else in your family vulnerable um but it's a lot of the information is is not used for you know um the kind of things that people are afraid of, of, of giving up, they're pretty general questions. They just want to know how many people are in your house. And um, so I, I, for me, you know, the, the, the uh, allotment of representatives in our Congress is huge because laws get made that way. But it's also a chance for our community to show how big we are. And the bigger that we show we are, and the more that people realize how impactful our community is, 
maybe the more that other leaders, even outside of our community, are going to take us more seriously and take our concerns more seriously. So please, not just for yourself or your community, fill out the census. It's as important as voting, which you're going to do too. In less than 20 minutes. Cool. All right, guys, so remember to visit 2020census.gov to answer all your questions and find out how you want to fill it out, whether it's online or through the mail, all right? So do your duty. All right, guys, keep it locked because we're going to have way more fun right here on The Zoo. Welcome back to the zoo. You guys, I don't think you're prepared for this ne next guest that we have. She's one of my favorites. She's a reoccurring guest. She is an international icon. Give it up for the one, the only, the beautiful, Clarice! Hi! Oh my, hi. I mean, you look fantastic. <laughs> Thank beautiful. you. I mean, ugh, I had to do all my own makeup, you know, with this weird disease going around. I had to just do it all myself, and I nailed it, so thank you. Is that a tangerine color on your it lips? It is. It's actually a Kylie lip kit. Oh. Um, I, it's sort of a leftover. I have a, I'm having a beef with Kylie right now. I can't talk about it publicly um, because it, it just happened, and I'm kind of like, it's like all swirling. Um, but yeah, it, I still want to you know, support her um, financially because she needs it. Right. And I think, you know, Wearing her lipstick is maybe the best way to do it. Are you concerned that if Kanye wins the presidency, that you're going to have beef with the first family? You know, I think, I think he'll look past that. <laughs> he's someone who is very ethereal like me, and, and I think he's creative enough to, to look past these boundaries that we set for each other and for ourselves. You know, it's important to push through any, any mental blocks. I've been trying to do that a lot lately. I've been just learning new words, like delusional. Mm. Yeah, stuff like that. No one, one, like, called you that or anything, right? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. Um, arbitrary. Mm. Wait, fixture. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Now, Clarice, I have to ask. I mean, you're in, you're in such incredible shape. Thank I mean, you. Have you been, what has your quarantine been like? Um, well... You know, saltines. Right. Duh. Low sodium. Yeah, low sodium. Nice crunch. Great taste, good crunch. Feels like you're eating more, you're actually eating less. Do you know what I mean? Recently I started seeing a nutritionist. Um, she's super cute, her name's Bianca, and she basically told me, just eat when you're hungry and don't eat when you're not hungry. And I'm like, can we reverse that? <laughs> like. What? Yeah. And so I fired her. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. rid of her. Yeah, you don't yeah, need that yeah. negative energy. No, right. right. Like, like you can't eat when it. you're hungry. Are no. you kidding me? I'd be obese. Right. So, yeah, no. Where did she get her degree in medicine? The Dr. Dre Academy? Yeah, exactly. Probably Trump University. Right. Ugh. I'm not following that. Disgusting. One of those online classes. Right. From DeVry. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, Clarice, let me ask are, are you dating in quarantine? Oh, I'm so glad you brought it up. Um, <laughs> I've been really struggling. I'm a touch. If you, you know, your five love languages, mm -hmm. physical touch is like off the charts for me. I'm like 15 out of 10 with physical touch. So exactly. I've been really struggling. So what I decided to do is because I can't be physical because I'm trying to be safe, I started my own OnlyFans to connect with my audience wow. where I share, I actually, you know, a lot of these um, hoes are, <laughs> are sort of like, <laughs> you know, showing off their body. Mm -hmm. And I'm more of like a demure, feminine figure. Mm -hmm. So I think my angle is that I'm measuring the hairs on my body and then comparing them. So I'll shave off a hair from my pubic area and mm -hmm. one from my leg and one from my head and maybe inside my ear. And then I'll measure them to compare, you know, how my body's growing and what parts of my body are, are growing faster. That's so smart. Yeah, it's like... Um, a personal ecosystem, you know? Like, if you have a garden, mm -hmm. there's like tomatoes and zucchinis. I Pumpkins. also have those in my body. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's great. 
I mean, you're really, like, I guess, you know, lemons into lemonade. You're taking care and making it into a wig, mm -hmm. I guess, right. which is impressive. And then once you get enough followers, people are going to want to buy those hairs from you. Oh, so... I'm not measuring hairs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's porn. <laughs> yeah. So is it only, you know, hair length on your OnlyFans? Are we seeing any sexy shots of Clarice? Or no, is... A lot. Yeah. A lot. Okay. A lot. Yeah, it's mostly porn. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Do you have a favorite move that I you just... like? I wanted to intro, you know, I'm trying to be classy, so. I are to, like, you, intro. are you using, you know, like, um. Blew my cover. <laughs> like, what's your monthly rate? Like, is yours pretty high, pretty low? I'm thinking yours should be, you know, obviously on the higher end. Yeah, yeah. thousands. Um, it's $35 a month, oh. plus I'll oh. do customs, like, if you want me to, like, spit in a can or something like that, like. Um, I don't like feet stuff because I have warts on my, on my toes. Some people might be into that. It's, you're right. You know what, I think a wart would look so good well. yeah. with your bedazzled Birkenstocks. So I think you just need to Thank you. switch up the angle. Thank you. Now there are a lot of, you know, horny old men on OnlyFans. Yes. Do, has anybody asked you to do anything a little odd or unconventional? A little freaky? Yeah, definitely freaky. Um, so I have a newly acquired kitten that um, is really sweet. She's five months old, and they've been asking me to do some stuff with her, and that's where I draw the line. What kitten are Thank we referring God. to? Um, oh, your no, a real one. use a litter box, or? Yeah, no, the oh, litter okay. one kind. Thanks for yeah. clearing that up. She sleeps next to me, and I know, I know. It's, there are all these acronyms and innuendos. I told you, I'm learning new words. Right. Yeah. You're like a thesaurus. Well, not yet. I'm just, <laughs> I just want to be a dictionary first, and then I can learn right. the synonyms. You'll get there. Yeah. Um, also, I've been wearing my hot sauce choker a lot. Oh, so cute. I don't know if you can see. Bruno oh, took wow. my idea for this for his clothing brand, but I actually originated it. And wherever you go, I know you can't really like eat inside, but let's say you're eating a big taco outside. Mm -hmm. You can just take this out and then unscrew the cap and use it for your taco. That's so smart. And then put it back. It's also safe too, because like I don't want to be touching anyone else's hot sauce bottle in these times. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, my mom tried to share her hot sauce with me, and I'm like, Mom, like, I'm no. only 16. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I think you should use that bottle and work it into your OnlyFans routine. Oh, I'm gonna yes. work it. I'm gonna Sprinkle work it little. somewhere else. Yeah. Oh. Have you ever used Tabasco in in the bedroom? Um, a couple times, but only to blind someone. Oh. Yeah, I didn't like the way he was looking at me. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you, you know, some people turn to me, so you're like, I'm just gonna turn to my, my, my choker. Exactly. For self-defense. Yeah, I think a good that's, tip. that's inspiring. Yeah, and people look at me like I'm crazy, and then they see how much I'm enjoying the taco, and they're like, wow, I freaking played myself. Well, yeah. when we come back from the break, we're gonna have more with Clarice and what she does with her taco. And don't go anywhere, because coming up, we have an interview with singer Marie Monti. Don't go anywhere, you're watching the zoo. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about your fight with Bruno. Yeah. Now, where do you guys stand these days? Ugh. Okay, so. First, he was like, I want you to design stuff for me, right? And like, so I did a bunch of designs. And just on faith that he would pay me because I'm like. $35 a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have to be hot for yeah, $35 hot. a yeah, month. Yeah, right. And like, if weird old men are paying me for pictures of my, my hair, then, then like, he should just pay me for being creative mm -hmm. and inspiring him. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And I actually had to uh, process some litigation recently. <gasps> Because, yeah, we, we ended up signing a contract, and now he's completely broken that. And the brand is taking off. Like, they're in Bloomingdale's, Fred Siegel. Amazing. They're, like, they're doing great, and I'm not seeing any returns. I'm, like, I feel like Shia LaBeouf or something. In holes. Not but, good. But he's doing well. Now, do you ever think that maybe it's because deep down that Bruno's in love with you? <gasps> good idea. You know, it's funny you bring that up. I mentioned it to him and he got super defensive. And I think I'm probably too much woman for him. He is, um, you know, he likes, he, he likes a different type, you know? I think easier. Mm. He's into the easy ones. You're a lady. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm learning a lot of words recently. And I'm adding on to that by putting, um, Statues in my home. Pictures, oh. as you said. Pictures. Earlier. Yeah. You remember? I remember. Uh, touch. 
<laughs> now, do you, are you it's doing? So hard there's, are they pictures of you, or are they pictures of what are the pictures of? So the, the they're they're fixtures. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, but next time. Yeah. yeah thanks yeah. for clearing it up. Okay. Um, so basically, they're all uh, religious symbolism, but I've dedicated it to my spirituality. So there's, you know, I have a fixture for my yoni, and I have a fixture for um, my, my temple, my crown chakra, mm. one for my root chakra, one for my ears. So like all the sort of like parts of me that um, feel senses, I can use those fixtures to then impart power back into myself. So if ever one part of me is feeling weak, I go and I pray to that fixture and I ask for forgiveness and they always deliver. Oh, I mean, yeah. amen. Yeah, amen. Have, like there's like one from Japan and one from Turkey and speaking of Turkey, it makes you so sleepy. <laughs> right. Yeah. After Thanksgiving dinner, just zzzz. Yeah, like. My, whenever my grandma, they, after the turkey, we're like, oh my God, is she asleep or dead? I so know, right? Just get a little. You, nev you never know. I actually fed my cat ground turkey and then I ate it, but it was raw. Is this the five month old cat that you're sleeping with? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. We haven't announced our relationship. Your relationship with the cat? Right. Uh oh. Okay. Well, I, I support you, and I, I think what you're doing is brave. I is don't know if I support the cat thing. Is something yet, funny? But... No, nothing is funny at all. It's oh. all spiritual. It's no touch. I oh, don't right. astral sex. Astral. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you guys. Not astral, astral glide. Astral. Like you're the cat. Yeah, I'm not astral a, projects the I'm not a freaking razor. It's astral sex where you you picture something right in the stars. You think, okay, what do I what do I want to bring into my life, and then you embody that. And whoever your partner is, it can be an object, an animal, a person, doesn't matter because there's no physical touch. Right. It's all astral. We have to protect ourselves from the, from the virus. So, so you, you dig deep down and you can actually, you guys, let's try it right yeah, now. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm done. I'd love to. Yeah, I did this actually formally on the zoo, but new people now. So kind of breathe into it, breathe deep. And now visualize. Astral. No, no, no. Oh, no chanting. Sorry. Visualize something that you need, that that you want. It can be sexual or or not. Um, and then kind of start to start to vibrate your body a little bit. Like do a little bit of kind of shaking. Maybe get your toes involved, and get a, almost a whole body shake going. Yeah. And now you're gonna wanna really focus in on that. And then let it go. <laughs> Is anybody else a little moist? I just had one. Now, Clarice, I have to ask you, you know, there's so much stuff going on in the world. It's so dark. It's so scary. What do you want to say to these people who are not wearing masks? Um, hello. I'd first like to say I have one right here and put it on, OK? Also my design, by the way. It's so pretty. Oh, is that lingerie? Yeah, it looks like a sexy. It looks like a sexy yeah. thong. It used to be, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> used. Used, yeah. of course. So for the here's fragrance. The thing. It's freaking science, okay? And I've never been one to believe in science, but it's pretty straightforward, all right? Like, it's time to just do it, all right? Mm -hmm. Listen, okay? There are these doctors. What's his name? Doctor Fucci, Fox. one of the cutest men I've ever seen in my life, ever. And I've seen tons of men. And let me tell you, they've seen me. And here's the thing. You just wear it, OK? It's really easy to breathe. I'll make you one, even. I don't care. Like, I want people to be secure. LA is supposed to be this progressive, like, we're so ahead of the curve, OK? The only curve we're ahead of is this behind, all right? And it's time to start getting serious. Right. Because this thing, it, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter who you are. Mm -mm. You could, like, the, the king of England or something got it. So, like, everyone can get it. Now, let me ask you, let's say that, you know, you met Dr. Fauci at a bar when things go back to normal. Do you think that you might be able to break up the astral relationship with the cat for him? Mm. Um, yeah, and then I'd break his back. <laughs> <laughs> I love your confidence, Corey. I think he Thank would love you. that for him. I, yeah. yeah. 
he seems like he needs it. He's so stressed. Everyone's everyone's kind of in the media, I, like yeah, silencing him, taunting him, and yeah, and and Trump. I don't even like saying his name, but but he's been really bad. So, well, I hope it gets better. I hope we can work on collectivism and unity. Same. I love you, Clarice. Thank you so you much so for being much. here. Thank Guys, you, you can you. catch Clarice right now on her OnlyFans account. Figure out how long that hair length might get. When we come back from the break, we're joined by singer-songwriter Mari Monti. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Zoo. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the zoo. We have another fabulous guest for you right now. She's a singer-songwriter who just released her singer single, Mi Duele. Give a nice warm welcome to Marie Monti. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, thank um, you for coming. Super excited. I mean, you look fantastic. <laughs> thank you. I was thinking about doing some sit-ups in the dressing room, and I did it, and now I regret it. Next, I'll, next I'll join Marie. you. After. Right? After this, you're yeah. going to be our, our fitness instructor. So your single just came out. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, it's called Meduele. It's a single in Spanish. I speak French, Spanish, and English, so I try to, you know, use all these languages in my music. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited. It just came out last week. It's my first official single to be out. So yeah. That is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Now, what inspired the song for you? Uh, it's a love story. It's a very painful, intense love story, and that's pretty much what I've been experiencing my whole life. So who hurt you? <laughs> I guess uh, lots of. What's his social? Yeah. What's his address? Yeah, really. <laughs> I, I have some mace and brass knuckles. You tell us, Marie. We're going to go get them for you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. But yeah. So how does it feel? I mean, what was your creative process like creating the song? So this song was actually uh, initially, initially produced by um, a producer duo that's called Ten Towns, whom I'm working on my uh, whole EP with, and they're absolutely amazing. And I don't know, when I, when I just like heard it, it was... It was obvious that I wanted to work on it and collaborate with them, and yeah, wow. that's how the song came about. Mm -hmm. That's really amazing too. That as a trilingual artist, you've been able to get kind of go into every um, like that. You're in the Spanish market now, and I'm assuming that you probably used to sing French music, French, yeah, English. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you find that like when you were? Um, starting to grow that people were trying to maybe put you in like one box and that you just had to keep kind of breaking out of or has it been pretty definitely yeah exactly. honestly th that's why I moved to LA because when I was in France everybody was trying to make me sing in French and I I mean I love French music still and I also have some songs in French as well but I really wanted not to be limited yeah you know in my art so I feel like some songs I just I just feel them in Spanish or in English, and yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah. And this is the first single of your forthcoming EP? Yes. Right, is there gonna be a music video for the single? There is. <gasps> Are you there able to film is. it during quarantine? So we couldn't film it during quarantine, and we had to make a lot of adjustments on the scenario and everything, but we ended up being able to uh, film it when it was allowed to film again, and it looks really cool, so. Can I you give us a little sneak peek about what we might be able to expect uh, from a Meduela music video? It's very cinematographic. Oh, that's cool. So, because I'm a big fan of cinema and movies in general, so I wanted to like sneak. Uh, it's going to tell like a story. Exactly. Yeah. Tell a story and yeah. Now, how will your first single differ from other songs on the EP? Um, honestly, like they're all pretty much like very personal as well and very love oriented and also is like a kind of reggaeton, really cool yeah. like beat. Catchy. But uh, I don't know, I really feel like you would have to listen to Oh, I'll Make be listening own, to, to have and like, dancing to create, to and wearing have something similar opinion. to what you're wearing, hopefully, yeah. and just, Same just nails turning too. it up. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't pull it off as well as you. I love it. And I hope there's a lot of different fashion from you in the, in the music video, because yes. I could tell you're a fashionista. Oh my gosh, you should check out her That's IG. I, I did, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you, have some, you have amazing partnerships too, right, with like some pretty good um, like high fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your, your single Lazy was yes. featured in the Dolce and Cabana Peony campaign yes. for the fragrance. I mean, exactly. that's like a dream come yeah, true. It is. How it did was, that feel? It was really a miracle, like basically because I was not, you know, I wasn't like signed or anything. I was really on my own. I uh, shot the music video with a few friends from UCLA, 
and uh, we put it out, and then yeah, it happened. So it was cool. Cool. That was cool. That was the beginning of everything. I That's know you started amazing. playing um, instruments at a young age. Do you see yourself ever like introducing that again in your music? I would love to. Honestly, I'm just. To be honest, I'm not as good as I used to be when I was a kid because it was, you know, part of my everyday yeah. life and stuff. But I'm getting back at it, and I love it. So, you attended yeah. a conservatory as yes. a little girl, right? Yes. I believe you played the piano. The piano and the cello for ten <sighs> years. Mm -hmm. What do you enjoy playing more? The cello. The cello. I mean, I love the piano. But Anybody could play the piano. The, the sound. The cello. Yeah, that's the impressive. sound of the cello is really. That's some symphony me. stuff. You're mm -hmm. like, hold on, yeah. sit there with your <laughs> piano. I'm gonna come back with the cello and show you how it's done. Yeah. So, yeah. do you think we'll maybe in future music? Because I know this next album is gonna be a very party and dancing mm -hmm. and fun. Maybe we'll hear the cello. I come hope back so. On future yeah. music. That, that's uh, that's one of the goals. So yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, now tell me, what is it like being a singer-songwriter? Are you in, well, you're not independent. You just got mm -hmm. signed to Sabin Group yeah. and Universal Music Group. You're one yeah. of the first artists out of that partnership. How does that feel? Amazing. It's the first time that I have, like, you know, an amazing team and people really, like, trying to do everything for my music to be heard. So it's, I'm super grateful. Now you yeah. perform somewhere where you were discovered by them, right? Uh, I didn't perform, but uh, Haim Saban heard my songs and he saw the Lazy Music video. So he heard of it through this whole like Dolce & Gabbana thing wow. and he contacted me. Yeah, I received an email, basically. Oh my goodness, how exciting is that? On the table, so that was, cool. yeah, best day of my life, honestly. <laughs> so Me Dwelle was recently released and I understand you also have a remix coming out. Yes. Now, how does it work when you want to put out a remix of a song? Do you meet with different producers? Like, how does that work? So the remix is not about the production. Mm -hmm. um, we did a remix with a, a featured artist. That's going to be a surprise, <gasps> so I'm not sure. Is it Clarice? <laughs> Clarice, where are you? I want to do a feature that would be, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. The fashion between the two of you. I, I don't know, know if I can take it. That may break records. But her hair looks so much better than mine. I have to you know, step up my hair game. But um, yeah, and there's a remix in French, actually. <gasps> wow. That I'm very awesome. excited about. It was, it was a challenge to uh, translate, you know, because it's not really translating the song, it's really yeah. rewriting it in another language. And I love it, so oh, that's I hope such a cool it will school connect. To have. Yeah. It's be trilingual. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think we're gonna take it to commercial, but don't go anywhere, guys, because we are gonna be right back with more questions for Marie Monty. <laughs> Welcome back to the zoo. We're still here with Maddie Monti. We're getting to know her a little bit better. Um, so how old were you? No, sorry, that's probably inappropriate to ask. How long have you been in the United States, um, you know, working on the, the new EP? Uh, I've been here for three years, yeah. And oh, working cool. on my EP with 10 towns for a year now. Okay. Yeah. How do you like it? I love it. Have you been in mainly in Los Angeles? I've lived only in Los Angeles, but I travel to Miami, New York, uh, Boston, San Francisco, like a few yeah, you know, so cities seen, before. Seen yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were a little girl, did you always know that this is what you wanted to do? Absolutely not. No. Nope. What did you think you were going to be doing? <laughs> really? I wanted to be a secret agent. <gasps> The FBI of it all. For real. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> That's amazing. So when did you discover, when did you have this change of heart? Honestly, that was after like I started my study. So I, I started to study uh, law and political science in France because I really wanted to like get into this. And, um, and I don't know, I just like felt like I needed to connect with my artistic side again. So I went to Paris, I went to an acting school, and that's where I started to sing and really discover my voice. And I was like, okay, that's what I, that's not only what I want to do, that's what I need to do. Yeah. That's the only thing that, you know, makes me feel full Yeah, there's and no happy. plan B. This is exactly. everything going yeah. in Yep. Sink or swim, I love it. And you're <laughs> swimming. Yeah. So tell us about some of your musical inspirations growing up. Um, Shakira, <gasps> definitely. She was, she was my idol as a little girl, so. Do you do a lot of dancing too? Yeah, I'm not as good as her, obviously. But, um, but yeah, that was her. I, I listened to a lot of like a bit of everything. Nina Simone. Yeah. Um, she's one of my favorites of all time. Lena Del Rey. Currently like J Balvin, Osuna, Bad yeah. Bunny. These are my yeah, favorite. So. Now when you, let's say, so you pick out the single from the album. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I know we spoke a little about the creative process a little bit. So are, do, you, do you work with different choreographers? Because I, I could see you being a very big performance artist mm -hmm. by looking at your Instagram. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. You're welcome. So Ooh. tell us what that's like once you pick the single. Because I'm, I'm always fascinated because people think you just record the song, but there's mm -hmm. so much that goes into it. There is. It's just that for us it was a bit different because the quarantine happened. So we didn't really have you know, time to prepare uh, for shows or rehearse uh, dancing and stuff. But hopefully, like this summer, it will definitely happen. And I hope I can be on stage very soon. Yeah. You know? I know. It's so, really amazing at festivals. Yeah. That's like, that's the goal. Yeah. You know, when you, when you have a song out, you just want to connect with the people and like see people dancing to it and stuff. So. so because of quarantine, would you say that you're maybe connecting with your fans in a different way? Definitely, yeah, through social media. So for me, it's a little uh, different because I'm still a developing you know, artist. So, so I'm I'm growing my fan base with Medwele now, and I just I, it's just really it's a, it's just a really good feeling to see how people genuinely like the song. Yeah. Now, so I'm it's just, really catchy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any crazy fan stories on mm -hmm. Instagram? Anybody that's ever. Uh, no, nothing crazy. Not I've yet. Have, not, <laughs> yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. I have honestly, I'm really, I'm super grateful to you know yeah. everyone that's like sending me messages, and I get a lot of cute messages, but nothing, nothing that's, creepy. I'm, or I'm crazy. relieved to hear that. Yeah. I know. Knock on wood. <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bother, Marie. Half okay. Just gonna leave and just have like all these horrifying. <laughs> <messages>. <laughs> Awesome. So tell us more about how quarantine has been for you. I mean, do you find that like you're, I mean, I've been trying to work out a little mm -hmm. bit, but yeah. it's still very hard because I live in a studio apartment. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it, it's very limiting. Mm -hmm. What has the quarantine been like for Honestly, you? Honestly, yeah, as far as working out goes, um, I'm not sure it was the best for me either, but I liked it because I, I was able to stay home and write songs and, you know, just listen to music. I'm not that big of a, I don't know, like, party girl or something. So you're not like missing so, the club scene too yeah, much or anything. No, yeah. exactly. So I'm just, I just try to be happy wherever I am. And that's it. So. I don't miss the club scene. I don't either. Waiting on a line for an hour. Uh, and then yeah. when you get in, I have under boob sweat. It's too much. Yeah, I don't want to ever spend like $20 on a drink again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> to have it spilt yeah. on me. Yeah. That's my own story. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So uh, I'm really excited for this EP. Now, do you think there's going to be more music videos? Yes, I hope so. Is there going to be a music? So. How many singles do you think you're going to put out before the album drops? I don't know. <gasps> I don't She's know. keeping us guessing. Hope, hopefully, as many as possible. I love them all, so I want them all to be singles, but we'll see. Oh, and yeah. you went to the Latin Grammys. How was yes. that? I know that was that like your big, like your first big event like that. That's it huge. was. It was my first red carpet ever. It was amazing, and I saw so many like amazing artists on stage as well. How like, do you pose on the red carpet? Can you show oh. me? Because I, I, I've been on red carpets and I have the most awkward. <laughs> okay. I do this weird okay. thing where I do a foot yeah, behind try. because it makes your, your, your body makes cinch it. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna so, like a I mean, I want to look like Marie. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I usually have a dress, so like. Oh, wow. Something like this. And. Oh, the, the butt. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, and I definitely don't look like you. Yeah, I don't look but like this that is. <laughs> It, people don't realize, I mean, red carpets look like such a glamorous thing, but people don't realize like how awkward it is because it, it's very stressful because you only have a certain amount of time to be on the carpet. There's other people waiting. So you literally have like 15 seconds exactly. to strike a pose. Yeah, and you have to look at every photographer, like every yeah. camera. And it's just, like, over here, over yeah. here. <laughs> and for me, it was so new. I was like, okay, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> like just trying to... Well, I really appreciate yeah, yeah. that you got to show us your red carpet <laughs> pose because that's something that I need that I need to work on. Yeah, I'm gonna practice. Yeah, really as soon hard. as this is, this interview is <laughs> over, I'm going right into the dressing room and I'm gonna pose behind the back. behind the back like this. Hi. We can all rehearse together. I, I, I listen. I I, I'll it. take any tip that I, I can need get. Red carpet buddies. So. <laughs> yeah. We're there. So, what do you want fans to take away from your music? Um, I feel like. I want my fans to feel, you know, to feel good, to feel, to feel better after they listen to my songs because even if it's, it talks about like painful love and uh, relationships that don't really go as good as they should have, that there's always light at the end of the tunnel and yeah. you can always like get something positive out of it. That's and good. yeah, that's pretty much like, I want to send a message of hope, if hope. that makes sense, yeah. Do you find that you write your best music when you hurt? 
when, when I feel good, I just like to listen to music, you know? But I feel like writing yeah. whenever I feel like more. Get it all out. Yeah. Well, I don't want you to get hurt, but we need more good music from you. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if, if the relationships don't go that great, I think there's a silver lining. Yeah. We're going to get more great music from you. She like purposely that, yeah, dates. At, at least it has, there's a good side to it. So we'll it's true. It's there for a reason. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all your tips and for showing us how to pose, ladies and gentlemen. You guys, thank you so much for watching this zoo. You could get Marie Monti's new single, Me Dwelling, right now out on DSPs. And this was a really amazing show. Thank you for watching the zoo, and we will see you next time.